It's Chelsea. It's Nina. And, and you're, you're in the, the Critics Kingdom. Kingdom. Hello, hello, everybody. We are back again with another installment for the uh, Lawrence Brothers Suite. This time we are doing Jumping Ship, which stars all three Lawrence Brothers, actually. Um, and is actually the sequel to Horse Sense, which Nina and I did not remember until the movie began. Um, <laughs> and, and they had the same character names. And we were like, oh. Um, yeah. They don't put it in the title, you know? like Yeah, it's not like no Horse Sense to... 2, Jumping Ship. Like, it's just... <laughs> you know, like, there's really no... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we had no idea. Um, and this one actually came out in 2001, so still in that, like, initial run of Disney movies just kind of, like, coming out and, like, getting it groove. Um, and we'll kind of get into our thoughts on this movie once we get into the review and how it fits into that. Um, but, you know, this was one that I feel like when I was growing up, I remember thinking it was okay. I at least watched it once or twice. Um, but I don't remember feeling like, oh, this is one of the ones I loved. Um, do you feel similarly, Nina? Yeah, I like, and it's interesting because it's like when, like when we when we started watching it, and I saw that it was a sequel, I was like, oh wow, I really like it. Kind of came back to me, but I was like, oh, like I really hadn't clocked that. Um, which implies to me that this is just not. But I remember, like, you know, we talked about it literally last episode. You know, I really liked Horse Sense as a kid, and I know I really liked Horse Sense as a kid. I always remember that. So my instinct is that this did not do it for me, even then. Um, but yeah. 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 I don't know. Like, there's a chance that, like, it could be a favorite. For, I just don't, I don't feel like this is one that gets pretty lost in the general conversation. I would agree with that. Yeah, I think even when you think Lawrence Brothers, I don't know if this is... This one might be the first one you think of only because it has all three. And I think when we, before we embarked on this journey of doing their suite, I had thought all three of them were in more than just the one, but it's literally only this one that has all three of them. Yeah, I think that... I mean, we should have looked this up. (laughs) Our bad. But uh, I feel like they were in... Maybe it was a prop... There was a movie with all three of them in there where, like... They're younger, I feel like. Mm, okay. Where he's like more of a kid, and like Matt looks like he looked like when he was playing Jack on Boy Meets World in the early days. Mm-hmm. And Joey is like a little bit younger, and they are all actually brothers. I feel like there's a movie out there that exists like that that I thought was a Disney Channel original movie that obviously is not. They um, had a show with all three of them. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's the show. Because that's how they got famous. They were on their own show called Brotherly Love. Yeah, actually, that's exactly what I'm thinking of. Never mind. And I'm thinking of brotherly love. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know, I, 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 get, I get what you're saying. But it seems like all three of them were in more movies than they actually were. Yeah. Um, but I think, I, I think I'm just remembering episodes. <laughs> like, I was little, I just saw multiple You're like, episodes. but I've seen something where they... <laughs> Is that like, I've seen them many times together. All three of the big <laughs> brothers. You know, so this is strange for me. <laughs> it was oh. a season two. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, <sighs> but yeah, no, I feel like that they it, they seem like they're in more movies than they are. But this is actually the only one where all three are all together. Um, so I guess Nina, do you want to get into the recap for it? I would love to, Chelsea. So sequel to Horror Sense, as we say, like we open up and we see Michael and Tommy. Um, they're essentially going on a trip to Australia that Michael has planned to bring Tommy along. I guess it's been like, you know, they keep it in line with the actual timeline. So it's been like two years since they've seen each other, or at least since the whole ranch saving situation happened. And um and yeah, they just, you know, they want to chill. But, you know, the things happening in their life right now, we see that Tommy's mom has a new beau. And Tommy's not necessarily a fan, but she has made it very clear to little Tommy. We watch her make it clear to little Tommy that he ain't going nowhere. So you just going to have to learn to deal with that. <laughs> um, meanwhile, Michael, like Michael's dad sort of comes out to him, like chilling at the pool and is like, bruh, I thought you were going to get a job this summer. You're 23. You're too old for this shit. And he's like, eh, I don't know. Like, I don't really know if that's for me. And his dad's like, okay, well, if you don't have a job to, like, pay back all the money you're spending on this trip to invite people who weren't supposed to be on this trip, um, you going to work for me at my law office? And he 
because he's really is dumb, thinks that he's going to be a partner at his father's law, law firm when he has not gone to law school, let alone passed anybody's bar. Um, and his dad's like, no, you'll be a file clerk. So Tom, Michael's freaking out about that. And Tommy's, you know, saddened by the idea that his dad is being replaced. And um, that's where we enter the film with them. They get to Australia and immediately we watch this woman pickpocket Michael because he's, he gets, you know, he shows up in a limo. He gets out. He's mad flashy. He has like these powder blue suits that I guess are expensive for him and Tommy <laughs> and mad bag. So, and he's like on his cell phone, like he's clearly just advertising his wealth. So, you know, he gets got. And they go and they go to like, because the whole idea is that they're taking a boat, they're taking a charter boat to this island called Paradise Island that's supposed to be great. They're going to hang out there for a while. So they go to the dock and they think that they're on this really nice ship. They're not. They go to the ship that they're on and it's dingy. And out comes the captain, Jake, played by Matthew Lawrence, who is surly as all hell. (laughs) (laughs) He's miserable. You know, he's to have the good time. Um, and, (laughs) and Michael is like, oh, hell no, we're not doing this. We don't really see what comes of him attempting to get another boat, but there is no other boat. So they have to do this and they go off to sea. Um, at sea, obviously Michael and Jake really don't get along at all. Michael is his spoiled, bratty, pretentious self. Um, and Jake is clearly a much more salt of the sea type of man. You know, he's out there, like, he really cares about his boat, and, you know, he knows a lot about the sea. We watch him and Tommy sort of bond as he, he tell, as, you know, Jake is telling him about his own dad and how, like, oh, like, you took over, like, your ranch for your dad, like, I've taken over this boat for my dad. Um, and he tells him about how, like, you know, they kind of treasure hunted a little bit and found all these gold coins, but they couldn't really... They just had to invest the cold coins back into the boat so they only have one left that he keeps with him, et cetera, et cetera. And how, like, you got to watch out for pirates out here. And Tommy's like, pirates? For real? And Jake is like, yeah, there are pirates still in the world. And that's when we see that not only are there pirates in the world, but the pirates are... The woman who pickpocketed Michael is one of these pirates. And she is working... Like, it's her and this one blonde surfer-looking dude working for... I would assume Thai because it's Australia, but an Asian man who is the leader of the pilot gang. He is the only man of color, only person of color in the movie, fun facts. Um, but he's, you know, he's the pirate king. And they have run all of Michael's credit cards and they have realized that he has unlimited credit cards, which means that he is a cash cow. So they intend to kidnap him, hold him for ransom and then murder him. Uh, So that's what's on the heels of, you know, these three men out at sea. They are unaware of that. Um, You know, they're just having their their fights and their qualms and all of that kind of stuff. Um, And Michael is like, okay, Tommy, I'm sorry, I'm being an asshole. So he gets Tommy his cell phone. Tommy drops his cell phone in the sea, doesn't tell Michael that. But as this happens, the pirates are now on their tails. They've caught up with them and they are coming to try and, like, hop on the boat. They managed to foil that. But now Jake is like, they're not going to stop coming for us. Um, it's weird that they're coming for us because, like, this boat is clearly not valuable. But they are. So I'm going to drop you guys off on this random island. And Michael's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And Jake is like, don't question me. I am the captain. So <laughs> Jake drops them off and has, has them swim to this random island. <laughs> While he, like, goes off, right? He's like, he's going to distract them, right? He's going to get the pirates away. So now Michael and Tommy are trapped on this island, and we watch them go through sort of three days of hell um, because they clearly don't know how to survive out there. Um, they try to build a shelter. Michael thinks it will protect them from the rain. Honest to God truth, the way that they were wet and the way that it was dark and cold, it looked like. I think that they would have gotten hypothermia, but this is a Disney film, so that's not what happened. <laughs> Um, but you know, they struggle, they can't fit, they're trying to spear fish, it's not working. Like, we watch Tommy, Tommy's just eating coconuts, like, that's all the boys been eating for days. Um, I'm not having a great time, and so they go exploring the island, and it seems like they're about to run into something nefarious, and then whoop pops out Jake, and he's like, Hey guys, I'm here, I came back for you. 
And they're like, great, let's get on the boat and get the fuck out of here. And he's like, uh -huh. fun facts, no. They were on my tail, wasn't going to be able to lose them, so I had to sink the boat. Scuttle the boat is the exact word. He had to scuttle the boat. And the pirates realize this, so they see the remnants of the scuttled boat. So, like, the Pirate King is really on this tip about how he really, really, really needs to get um, this this big fish. You know, it's a Moby Dick situation. Right. Michael is the dick. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they're trying to... So they're, go they're island hopping. Like, they're going to every island and searching every single island looking for these guys. Um, and so, you know... At first, like, Michael and Jake sort of get into it. And Jake is like, I'm the one with the know-how here. So if you want to go off and be on your own, fine, go off and be on your own. That's up to you. Tommy, you can do whatever you want. Tommy chooses Jake because he has a basic sense of survival instinct. This hurts Michael. But he goes off on his own. And as he goes off on his own, he does realize that, you know what? This isn't going to work. Like, this is not a problem. So he eventually comes back. And he's helping... He they're helping um, Jake build a raft because Jake is like, if we can build a raft, then we can get out to sea and like try to get into essentially just one of the like sea ways that like boats pass through, and hopefully they'll be seen. Um, and they're doing that when the pirates show up on the island because Michael's brilliant behind. Um, he saw a plane flying overhead and went and got the, the single flare that they have and set the flare off. Um, and like now the pirates saw the flare and knows to come get them. And Jake is like, you moron, like planes can't see that from where they are. But the pirates show up and they all have to, you know, the, the, the raft is trash. They have to abandon plans. They're trying to escape, trying to like swim, go into this underwater cave to escape them. Tommy's wearing a life jacket, so he can't go underwater. No way, no how. Jake convinces Michael to leave his cousin to the fate of the pirates while they come up with a plan. Um, and that's what they do. Little Tommy gets kidnapped and they go on into the underwater cave and they hide out for a little bit. And then they hatch a plan using the, that single gold coin to trick the pirates um, so that they can be free. They trick them by, like... So Michael confronts the pirate king, and he's like, you see these gold coins? I found a bunch of them. They're worth more than me. I will take you to them if you leave us be. The pirate king's like, okay, great, because he's greedy and foolish. So he leads him on, like, a wild goose chase into, into a cave. Meanwhile, Jake goes and just, you know, foils the other two pirates and saves Tommy and gets the boat. And, um, yeah, Michael manages to make it back to the boat. They all get on the boat. They all go back to Australia. In Australia, he, like, lets people know about the pirates. And he gets a reward. They decide to use that reward instead of, like, just living with it and being happy. He solves two problems in one by giving it to Jake so that Jake can, like, get a new... Or he gets Jake a new boat. He just buys Jake a new boat called the Tiffany Two. First one was the Tiffany. And um, and he has decided that he's going to be partners with Jake. He doesn't really give Jake a choice in this. But he decides that he's going to be Jake's partner. And they are now in the charter business. So he has solved his problem of, you know, needing to get a job. Tommy, you know, he got, like, Jake showed him a picture frame that apparently, I think his name is Mark, that the mom's boyfriend had put in the suitcase for him. Obviously, he loses that. But he now feels a little bit better about change being okay because he sees that Jake has built a semi-decent life without his father, with his dead father, and like how li trying to live up to what his dead father wanted could have ruined his life. So I guess now, Tommy, I'm really speculating on all of this. I'm like, this is what I hope is, is what they're trying to communicate. Right. But um, So Tommy is more adjusted now, I guess. And... Um, and yes, they have they live happily ever after. And we'll be right back with the review. So to get into the review of this one, I feel like we both felt like this was not a good movie. Like just blatantly was not good. <laughs> um oh, it was boring. Yeah. We were just kind of like, why is this still on after a certain point? Because it was dragging. Like the pacing is so off in this one. I don't know what happened, but like pacing is off and the movie just doesn't flow the way it should and just feels like it's like 
too long. Um, So it's just, it's like literally just not good. Um, (laughs) Like, it's just literally like, it's not, especially, it's not even as good as like, Horse Sense was at least engaging to a degree. This one, you really didn't have all that. And, like Which is said, a- we didn't even realize it was a sequel to Horse Sense. To tell you something, because they played all the Lawrence Brothers movies all the time when we were growing up. Yeah, and we don't. And I actually, and the thing is, like, I actually don't even remember this being played very often. And that, and and, and that's one of two things: either like I just clocked it out because I maybe watched it one time and decided that I didn't like it as a kid and moved on, mm-hmm. or you know, I. Or they just didn't play it very often. But either way, like, as a child, I clearly was not that discerning because I enjoyed shit like Steph's sister from Planet Wings, right? <laughs> and saw no issues with that shit, right? And Alley Cat Strike and saw no issues with those films, right? Um, and it very much enjoyed them. So I wasn't a particularly discerning child. So the fact that not only, like, you made, like, this movie and I watched it and didn't care about it, but, like, I was a kid, like, I really liked Pirate. And shipwreck yeah. and all of that stuff. Like I was that like I was that kid. And the fact that you made pirates boring <laughs> like that, that is an actual impressive or almost magical feat. Um so yeah, I feel like it says a lot more about the quality of the film than anything else. Yeah, <laughs> it was just not it wasn't it, it just wasn't it and we were both sitting there and we were just like, why? Like, it just, the entire time it was just like, why is this sequence of things happening? Why are these pirates so fixated on this man being the big fish when really he's literally just a bro? Like, he's not broke because his family's wealthy, but like, they're lawyers. Like, they were literally acting like they had got Rupert Murdoch. And I don't understand. I mean, it's also a thing of like, after like day five of searching for these people, you ain't, like what? Just go home. Like, like go home. <laughs> you're spending you have, that energy. Like, you have this. You're the literally wallet spending literally energy that has, it literally has money in it. A lot of money, from what I can Yeah, guess. he had a lot of money in that wallet. So why didn't you just take the fucking money and go the fuck back home, have a nice dinner, somewhere nice, and find the next catch there? That would have been very doable. Um, it just does the logic of it fails for me i mean the logic usually fails for me like this is not new with the disney channel (laughs) original movie franchise for me to have very deep questions about how these things connect to one another but um it just it didn't and and then like it i guess because it also we brought this up like it also felt like it was a sequel but like the character arts felt very similar like tommy's Mm -hmm. still trying to get over his dad and I mean, and you don't really get over a dead parent. That's not how that works. But you know, he's right. still trying to move on from the death of his father. And Michael is still like lazy and spoiled. Like that's it. Like it's the same exact character arc that they need to go through. And Michael, what goes through some tribulations and like almost loses something important to him for him to understand that like his laziness is a problem and his pretentious spoiled rich behavior is a problem because it's literally him being flashy that lands them in this situation in the first place also he already has his trust fund as we saw in the first one so once again i'm just starting to have questions (laughs) because (laughs) what is motivating you to do things if at 20 years old you already have access to your trust fund to the fact that you can already move things to your aunt to save the ranch in the first one and then in this one that clearly means that you're already you're basically already bankrolling your own life to a degree like I think he is still obviously like using his dad's money but like it just seems weird it just seems weird and also if a child had access to their trust fund at that point in life I also would not be trying to work either because I'd be like well do you see this these m's in the bank why exactly. like let why me go through school? that and then at 35 I'll decide what I want to do thank you right once I blow through all of it. Exactly. Um, um, so that's yeah. how that works. And that's not his fault. That's your fault, Papa. Like, right. <laughs> you didn't think this through when you set that up. Yeah, because I think he said he spent the 4K to, for them all to go on this trip was from his trust fund. 
No, it's like it, no. His dad is paying for the trip, and what he does is that he add like he invites oh, he adds the girl that we never see. Yeah, that part to the ice ice that we like... literally never see to the island as well, and that costs an extra four thousand dollars. But he just puts it on Daddy's credit card, and Daddy is like, "Excuse me, why am I paying four thousand extra dollars for this damn trip?" <laughs> For this girl, I only pay exactly. for when he cousins. explains it. Yeah, when he explains it, daddy's like, Okay, you gonna get a job or you gonna come work in my mail room? That's just what it's gonna be. I also love that him and Tommy, as soon as they landed in Sydney and were at the pier, are matching because <laughs> in what like... world would a 23 year old and a what 12 year old match? Like, like what? Like what? Twenty three year old would want to do that? That's what like I'm that's saying. not your kid. He would, like, he would never want to do that with like a child that's over the age of three and not really like and not your blood child. Yeah, dude, that was weird. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, you go. And I'm shocked. Why did Tommy put it on? I mean, I guess I can easily go with the like. No, Tommy will put anything on that. That's the brother that Michael, sorry, that his cousin uh, told him to do. Exactly. And also, like, there's that bit of it that's like, you know, I'm not paying for this. Right. So awesome. let me not poke the bear. You know, like, <laughs> don't buy hands that feed you. Just, right. So he's oh. just like, fine. If this is what I got to do to get this, like, two week yachting vacation, and I'll show you, I'll do it. To finally see the ocean. Because lest we forget. <laughs> Bobby went to LA and didn't see the ocean. Did not see the ocean. <laughs> I would be pissed. Could you imagine if I go domestically to the ocean? <laughs> Don't see it. Now I have to go thousands of miles away to at least get a glimpse. And the first time that you go to the ocean, you are chased down and kidnapped by pirates? By Yo. white pirates. Tommy's life is, and, and you know, except they're led by well, the except they're yeah, because, they're led by the the uh, Asian dude. Yeah, because you know, obviously, that's like, is that even like a thing? <laughs> Why the fuck did they do that? Maybe it, so maybe weird. it is, or maybe it was. I mean, you have pirates of all races, of all creeds and no, colors. I, I I mean, like, I know that, but it's just like I just don't. I wasn't expecting to get this multiracial pirate situation. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Like, it's Australia. You really could have made everybody white, like, the same way you did in Horse Sense, except for Mule. Like, you know what I mean? But Mule was friendly. Like, you didn't have to make the one person of, like, you didn't have to do that in this. Right, I mean, make him the, the head pirate. He's the Jack but it's, Sparrow. It's a, bad, it's a bad film, generally speaking, so I mean. As we've said. Um, <laughs> Fuck. As we've said many times. But yeah, like, poor fucking Tommy. That is, that is awful. I, feel I would so never hang out with my cousin. Him. Yeah, I would, I would be like, I'm not doing things with you anymore, dude. Every time I do, something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Right. Like, you need to just stay away from me. <laughs> you are not, you are not a lucky man. Um, but, yeah. Uh, there's also, you know, this is again, like, another one of those where it's just like, we watch, you know, the, the pirates have guns. And, you know, guns... It's early Disney Challenge movie. Guns are okay. Yeah. They stopped being okay pretty soon, but guns are okay. Um, she, uh, Michael. Like, yeah. Like, he just watch him pull a trigger. He, yeah. <laughs> he, he just had mud, you know, so much mud in the gun, it didn't work, but like. Yeah. That was, yikes. that was, Because yeah. he had a dead on shot with him in the water, like. He really did, which Michael clearly did not think about. Um, <laughs> when he jumped into that blue water in his white shirt, like, it just didn't occur to him. Um, there was a lot of dumb choices made. A and- lot of a lot of very dumb choices made. I I was really like, y'all really gonna leave the boy? Y'all they gonna did. Leave, you gonna leave the boy? <laughs> There's no way that a life jacket is that difficult to take off. I refuse to believe that. <laughs> They said, well, too bad. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it's not, it's it's, guys, it's just, it's just not a good film. There's just. It's definitely the exception to the rule because considering it came out in 2001, you would think that it would be better and it's just not. Like, it's not even as good as Horse Sense, which at least 
had some plot. Yeah. Um, so I don't like we. I definitely am like, and don't watch this one. I would not bother. <laughs> like, in the waste movie. of everybody's time. It's truly a waste of everybody's time. It's just, and it's literally too long. And I don't actually think it's over an hour and like forty minutes, but it literally felt like it went on. It's literally an hour and thirty minutes. I just looked it up. It yeah. felt like it went on for like two hours. Like, I was just like, why are we still here? Why are they still hunting for lobster? Like, I don't. <laughs> Why does it say day day ten on my screen? Like, yeah. <laughs> Why does it say day ten? Like, we didn't need so many days. You could have told this story over a three day span. Yeah, exactly. And it would have been we would have been like fine. Like that would have been totally cool. It did not. Also, like, how many islands were they next to on the open sea? That like near Australia. Are there that many islands near Australia? But, like, that many islands near each other where right. when they realized that they, he scuttled the boat, that they didn't, like, they weren't like, oh, there's three islands that it could be. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't... It's not connecting. Like, because islands are far from each other. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, even no, they are. in an archipelago, like, they are a sizable distance. If you are close up to a fucking island, like, it's a... It's usually a fairly sizable distance before you see the other, like, before you're next to the other island. Even when they're close, they're far. Like, even when I think, like, Hawaii as, like, a bunch of islands, it's not like you could see Maui from Oahu. Like, <laughs> like you don't, like, that's not a thing. I feel like over the course of us watching the Disney Channel original movies, it has very much come up for you in particular because, you know, you live there. Um, but just, like, you've had to be quite upset pretty often, not pretty often, but as often as one can be about this particular thing, um, at how wrongly Hawaii is generally depicted. Yes. <laughs> in, in, in media of the arts. Like, they just get it fucking wrong every time. <laughs> I am annoyed at the appropriation. They just used the Hawaii shirt, the Hawaiian shirts and the puka shells and said, this is the culture. And it's like, no, no, it's not. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it now. <laughs> like, they really just be making up shit about living on an island that's just fundamentally untrue. <laughs> it, it, it truly is. It is wild. Um, gosh. But, yeah, especially in this one, it was just, like, none of this made sense. From the moment that the man lost his wallet, realized it on said boat, and didn't take him and Tommy's ass to the American embassy. Yep. Yep. Before they ever took off. Like, it's like, dude. Like, what do you mean you're going to wire the money to Paradise Island? Does that mean, so you're literally on land. You're literally on, you're in fucking Sydney. You're in an English-speaking country. Like, why, the, why in the fuck? Why are you, you not what? just going to the American Embassy and just being like, somebody stole, I don't know, my passport? Because I'm assuming that was in there too. My passport, all my money, all my credit cards. And Tommy's passport too. Right. If you're even remotely responsible, you're the one. Well, I mean, actually, maybe <laughs> Tommy. Tommy should have been the one that had everything. Ex- but Tommy lost the cell phone. He, he did, but the- he lost it in the open water. He didn't lose anything on land. <laughs> you know what? Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Tommy just wanted to fish. That's all he wanted to do from the top of the fucking film. And he didn't ask for him to give him his cell phone. He, he was really just trying didn't. to fish in peace. <laughs> So I just, it was just like from that moment on, nothing made sense. Like it was, because that nope. just would never happen. That's not how that would work. Would yeah. Just be like, well, it looks like we're going to get a hotel, Tommy. Yeah. And like, and rich people are smart. Like he, they just don't play that game. No. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, dude, just get a hotel. When you got to the dingy ass boat and you saw the dingy ass boat, like, and the fact that like, like he doesn't realize it until um Jake asks for like second payment or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he realizes that his wallet was stolen. And it's like, okay, but so you telling me that you only had a deposit on like I thought that the boat was paid for it, like paid in full. Exactly. Therefore, we're gonna get on this boat and go to the Paradise Island. You tell me that you only put down a security deposit of what, maybe five hundred dollars tops? You weren't really like, you know what? It's okay. <laughs> when you looked at that death trap that you were about to go and sail on the open sea in, you weren't like uh, you can keep that. Right, Please keep get a new paint, paint job for yourself and seal up some holes. We right. gonna go stay at the hotel and figure out something for tomorrow. Right. 
That's not that's not what you thought. No, I was just taking so. him to the beach. That, that is literally it's true. But it, I'm thinking about in all friends. Actually, no, because in this scenario, we had already paid. My friends and I, senior year of college, we went to Puerto Vallarta. It was a time, but we ended up on. One of my friends was tricked into. <laughs> <laughs> one of my friends was conned by the local people on the beach into booking us all on a booze cruise. And she came to us and was like, y'all, I'm going to need a certain amount of money from everybody, so we're going to go do this booze cruise tomorrow. And we were, like, all kind of excited about it, but we were also like, like, baby girl, like, just let us know how did this happen. And she was like, oh, like, met this dude did. Uh, we all thought that she did this through the resort we were staying at. So we gave her the money. <laughs> and she gave them the money. And um, when we got to the boat, <laughs> first of all, was the, there was nobody else on the boat. It was just us. Um, I ordered. Uh, I asked for a uh, um a, a whiskey and ginger. And my friend asked for a sex on the beach, and the, they brought us both orange drinks and. I, <laughs> <laughs> and when we asked, like, what about the snack? Like, y'all promised a buffet situation, and they had pork rinds, two different flavors of pork rinds. It was a genuine. <laughs> it was a gen- And by the time we got to the night part of the situation, like, so we were playing, like, they didn't have speakers. We had to play the iPod, like my friend's iPod. It got dark out, and they were like, y'all got to choose whether you want music or light. <laughs> <laughs> we chose music and put on my friend's flashlight on his iPhone. It was it was literally one of those situations. Like they could have we I could not be here right now, Chelsea. They yeah, really could have, have taken us out to sea and you would have never found us again. I think because it was a group of black children, they realized that like ah maybe the ransom wouldn't be that great. But I am sure that white that there are many white children that have been lost to that scam. But anyway, um so maybe I can't be too hard on Michael in this particular <laughs> scenario because we all did get on that boat even though we got to it and we saw that it was a problem, but we got on anyway because we were like, fuck it, we already paid this money. But we were also poor. Not poor, but like, you know, like we, yeah. most You're, of you, us weren't you coming have a trust huge fund amount behind of you. Exactly. <laughs> and we were 21 in fucking Mexico. Like we just didn't, we weren't thinking, we didn't have a child to look after, you know? Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah. That was a fun aside, I suppose. <laughs> the only time I've ever been on one of those boats, we went to Maui when we lived in Hawaii, and my dad like booked one of them. But it was like a legit one. It was just like a smaller boat, and it was like the captain cooked for us, and like I think we had like shrimp or something. It was actually pretty oh. good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, but we were like sounds... the only people on the boat. It was just like us and like. But that sounds like a pleasant version of what we experienced, which was it not. was it was yeah. There wasn't any weird boozing or I mean, obviously it was just <laughs> me and my parents. So like... y'all weren't swindled. Is no <laughs> y'all didn't get swindled. But I still to this day, like I said, I I don't like I made the choice to get on the boat. That's true. I made the choice to physically get on the boat once I saw the boat, and that is on me. But I was not the one that was swindled. My friend was swindled. <laughs> And we just made the mistake of trusting her judgment. <laughs> I feel like that happens to many a person, honestly. Right? It's like, like, we're just trying to support you. Exactly. And, like, I know you're smarter than this. Like, we're on a college trip. We all go to the same Ivy League school. Like, I know you got basic level of sense. But, I mean, but... <laughs> you ain't think to make sure that this was some shit that the hotel knew about? At minimum. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Um, so I guess, like, I understand. It happens. It happens. But, I mean, I, I still say Michael's a moron, and this was a bad movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, both of those things are all true. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a very true fact. I guess with that, Dina, would you show this one to your kids? Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not, not going to happen. Um I just don't. I mean, like, what? Like, why? Why would we can watch Pirates of the Caribbean? No, not that's, that's not real, anything that's past real. the third one, just the first three. Like, what? Like, if we can do that, like, there's just no reason for me to engage with. It. We can watch Pirates of the Caribbean and various iterations of Peter Pan. 
and you will get all of your sea please, fairy please, please, <laughs> and your pirate. Wait, 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 wait. Peter Pan. I listen to me. I love Peter Pan. I know, but what does that have to do with jumping ship? Well, I mean, because Peter Pan, like Captain Hook, is a oh pirate. the Captain Hook <laughs> portion. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's what I mean. Like the you know, and like I pirate. was just thinking of the children flying. <laughs> Ironically enough, Disney. Wait, Peter Pan. Ironically enough, Disney's animated Peter Pan is probably my least favorite iteration of Peter Pan. And yes, I am including that nonsense that they did with Emily Blunt. Um. Oh, I forgot they remade another one. That or was it Emily Blunt or Katy Perry? Maybe Katy Katy Perry. Perry. No. Was it Katy? I don't know. I just know somebody was looking crazy in something, and it was one. Johnny Depp was in one. I think he was in Pan. Maybe it is that. Maybe it is that one. It's okay. that one. With, anyway, that one was also bad, but I still the you like anime. it better than the Disney one. Yeah, the anime. The anime is my least favorite of all of the iterations. Unless, are you thinking of Johnny Depp in Finding Neverland? Oh yes, I was. Okay, yeah, that's not. That's a different. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not the one I'm talking about. I actually really enjoyed Finding Neverland. We have gone on a very deep tangent. This is the second time that I have done this to y'all. So let me just reel it on back. I'm so done. Um, but I hope it was enjoyable, you know? like I love Hook. Was great. Um, unrelated, but like, I do love yeah. Hook. Hook was great. Hook was fantastic. And you know Romeo? Lil Romeo has a song on one of his albums where he like samples like the I won't grow up like that one. Actually, my favorite version of Peter Pan is actually the Mary Shelley um, theater performance my mom had on tape when I was a kid, and like we would watch it all the time. And it was oh, just, I've never actually seen um, a theater version of Peter Pan. That'd be fun. And that was the first one I saw, which is why when I saw Peter, it's the same thing that happened with the Jungle Book. Like I saw like the live action, like like. 60s or whatever one before I saw the cartoon one and I was like well this is just nonsense like <laughs> who was this for like why are you trying to dumb down things for me because I'm a child yes uh, and that's, that's how I exactly about. why <laughs> you, you were right on the money <laughs> um but yeah the the play the Mary Shelley play is actually my favorite um hmm. is that her name I think it's Mary or Marion Shelley something like that but that's actually my favorite version of Peter Pan and we oh. still have it on VHS that I will show to my children um, jumping ship, no. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea, will you do like? Will the babies be watching Jumping Ship? Eh, nah, not unless we're doing like a Lawrence Brothers thing. But this is a weak point for all three. Like really nobody, nobody really shown in this one. Like I can't even be like, oh, there was like a good performance. It's like no. I think Disney was like, you know what might be fun is we get all the brothers together and we take them to Australia. And somebody was like, sure. Um, <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? It's 2001 and they're a literally bankrolling things. So sure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I definitely, like you said, there are better cape, caper films. There's better pirate films. You can do better. You can do better. So yeah, no, I would also not show this one <laughs> um and with that i guess you know if you like you said if you if you really liked it as a kid sure sure yeah we watch it think it, about it's harmless that. it is harmless um, like, I'll say that. <laughs> yeah but um yeah what there's nothing about it that we would we could in good conscience recommend yes. so i guess with that <laughs> We'll chat to you guys soon with the next installment of our Lawrence Brothers finale. Bye. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of The Critics' Kingdom. Don't forget to follow us on Spotify and SoundCloud so you can stay up to date, as well as interacting and letting us know what you guys think on social media. You can find us on Twitter at Critics' Kingdom and on Instagram at The Critics' Kingdom. We're excited to talk to you again next week.